Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder with another Reddit story for you. This one is one of these. It's spicy. Title of this story is, Am I the Askonaut for Hiding My Girlfriend's Jewelry? I, 32 male, have been with my girlfriend, we'll call her Dawn, 30 female, for just under a year. Some helpful context, she was married at 24, her husband died two years ago. Since his passing, she moved to my city, and we are now planning for me to move in with her when my lease is up in the fall. I stay there a minimum of four days a week currently. Dawn's late husband passed in a work-related accident. Two others also passed and a few more were injured. From what I understand, it took her some time to heal, understandably. She met a few other people for dates before me, but I'm the only one she connected with over time. Part of her healing has been a form of downsizing. She still has photos with him online and a lot of physical photo albums, but the only major things on display are a stuffed animal he got her which sits on her headboard and a little display on her fireplace mantle, one of those digital photo frames. Th- uh, a threefold frame with a photo from his proposal, hidden photographer, a photo from their engagement shoot, and a wedding photo. His ashes, their wedding rings, and his engagement ring. She still has her engagement ring and wears it on a chain. Dawn has always loved the Harvest Moon series and had always wanted her engagement ring to incorporate a blue feather, which is what you used to propose in the game. Her late husband customized a beautiful ring with a sapphire feather on it, and his engagement ring also had one. I was mostly fine with her wearing it until I started attending work-related events with her. Her job is somewhat political and has a lot of networking events. Her friends know why the ring is important, and mine learned over time. But Almost every networking event, someone asks about it, and she always tells them it was the engagement ring from her late husband. It made me uneasy to hear it so often, but I was fine until I wasn't. I didn't mind people knowing she was married before, but I guess every time people asked her about it, it made me feel like I was her second choice. I asked her to stop wearing it as seeing it and hearing about it was starting to get to me and was a constant reminder that in her ideal life, he would still be here and she wouldn't even know me. We compromised. She would still wear it out except for events where people didn't know the story and were likely to ask. Fast forward to last week, we had an event with a blue color scheme and she had a beautiful blue dress. Normally, she wears a bracelet, earrings, and necklace, but this time she had just a bracelet and earrings, so I asked why before we left. She didn't have any other necklaces that went with the earrings, so I told her to wear the engagement one if she wanted. Sure enough, someone not only asked about the ring, but continued the conversation, whereas normally the subject changes once they find out her husband passed away. The person asked what kind of ring Dawn would want if she remarried, and she said she wasn't sure. Whatever I thought suited her as long as the band was silver. I felt my stomach drop. It hurt to know her old ring had such a special meaning and was something she always wanted, but now it didn't matter to her at all. The next morning I confronted her and she told me in the newer games there's a special flower to propose and I could incorporate that, but I felt like she was appeasing me. I'm not sure what came over me, but when Dawn was in the shower that afternoon, I took the ring from the sink. She's normally very careful with it, keeping it in the box on the mantle when she isn't wearing it, and on the edge of the sink when when she showers. She always keeps the plug in the sink in case her cat knocks it into the sink. The door had been open about halfway and the shower was foggy. I'm certain she didn't see me reach in or unplug the sink. After she dried off, she went to grab the chain and immediately freaked out. I feigned helping her look for it and told her it would probably turn up. The next day before work, she looked exhausted and told me she got up early to look for it, but she was a mess and I'm not sure she slept. We both went to work. When I got home, the place was spotless and she was crying. She came home from work sick and she does have an anxiety disorder and in retrospect probably felt physically ill at work, flipped the place upside down, cleaning, vacuuming, and then going through the container and even snaking the drain. My intention was to give her the chain back that night and pretend I found it somewhere in hopes that it would get her to leave the ring on the mantle, but there was no way I could pretend it was anywhere, not the way she searched. So I took it out of my wallet and fessed up. She was inconsolable and told me to go home. I tried texting and calling all week and she told me she needed space. Last weekend, I went to a barbecue at her friends, my friends originally, and she was supposed to attend with me. She did text me that morning and told me to tell people that I was sick, but they noticed my demeanor eventually and I told them the story. Results were mixed. I'd say about half of our friends took her side very quickly. One guy did say I set a boundary and she should have known that I didn't really mean it when I said she could wear it. And a second friend agreed, but said that it wasn't her fault someone asked her about it. A third friend also agreed with the other two, but his girlfriend pointed out that I expressed that it was okay and that if I didn't mean it, I shouldn't have said it. The rest of the group is kind of on the fence, saying that my hiding it was going too far and that I could have lost it. The general consensus is that I should have reestablished the boundary after the event, but that, but that hiding it was going too far. I see what they mean, but still think that I made a good point. At any point, the chain could break, be stolen on vacation, accidentally come, 
come unclasped, etc. And if that ring was so important, it should stay home with the others. I also want to note that I don't mind the small mantle tribute, and we discussed it in the past, that it can stay up when I move in. It's not the memories I don't like, it's this specific ring when she wears it. The ring doesn't get lost, eaten by the cat or damaged, and I think my point was made. So, am I the asshole here? Regardless of if you think I'm the asshole or not, can you please recommend any ways that I can fix this? I love Dawn and am and very much want to propose after I officially move in. She answered a text today, but it was very short and distant. I don't want to lose her. Uh, I think it might be too late, but you know what? Let's get some feedback from the one, the only, the spicy and her very own special kind of candy way, Candy Thunder. Come on, tater. You get that spicy tater today. I'm going to try this, too. You get spicy tater. Oh. I'm, like a, I'm like a hot tamale. You are That's a hot the tamale. Kind of, the kind of candy. Well, I think that this guy's insecurity ruined his relationship. I think that if you are dating someone that has lost their partner, um, you are taking on that grief as well. And you have to move through that relationship at the pace that they want to move through that relationship, not at what you think it should be. Um, and if Dawn wanted to wear this ring because it made her feel closer to the person that she lost, then what the f*** is wrong with that? What is wrong with that? It's like the only thing... That is wrong is this guy's insecurity in my in my opinion i think this guy needs to grow up yeah this is this is insecurity and and sophia saw your comment says uh as a widow she needs to be done uh i i agree with that this is insecurity and it's going to mm -hmm. pop up one item at a time that's the shitty part right he's not even moved in yet and he already has an issue with this specific ring and it's this specific ring because mm -hmm. that ring is a trigger for conversation so he doesn't like hearing about it he doesn't like feeling like if this guy were still alive, her ex, uh, that that they wouldn't be together because she wouldn't even know he existed. Well, guess what, buddy? That's the f truth. Right. That's She was married. She chose to marry this man, and he was taken from her, like, not by her choice. And so, of course, she's still mourning the loss of it. I can't imagine. I mean, love doesn't end just because somebody passes away. That's never going to go away. And in my opinion, if something were to happen to, to Dusty, I wouldn't. I would never stop loving him. Even if I did choose to move on, I probably wouldn't, but I... I will haunt your <laughs> ass so hard. I, uh... I, the love is never going to go away. Like, that love that you feel for a person is never going to die. Yeah. And that's what keeps them with you as you move through the rest of your life. But to try to take that away from somebody just because you love them, I mean, that's... That's just an epic fail. An epic fail of not handling your insecurities. And insecurities can just damage a relationship beyond repair. And he says he wants to fix this. The only way that you could fix this is to get help yourself. Mm -hmm. Because this is a you problem. Yep. The whole thing is a yep. you problem. Yep. And yep. You, yep. Yep. you went to taking someone that you love. You took one of her most loved possessions to prove a point. Use your words, dude. Talk this out. Talk to the woman that you love. Don't take her things and pretend that she lost that. That's just, that's just, that's it's nasty. Gross. Yeah. It's gross. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just, just gross. gross. Uh, I, I do think that the, I agree with you. The only way that he can olive branch this and say, hey, I, I want to fix this. I want to, I, I want to mend our relationship. I do want to be together um, is to, number one, give a genuine apology. Mm -hmm. And number two, show her the scheduled appointment for your first therapy session. Like it doesn't need to be, uh, I'm going to, it needs to be, here's what I've already committed to do. Because uh, words words are gonna be empty at this point, it needs to be action. You have to show her through action, she's not gonna believe anything else. Right. Also, because if, you know, losing losing your, your life partner isn't enough, uh, like moving on, I'm sure, is difficult enough right. in its own right, having to deal with the insecurities of, of everyone else as you're trying to date and like, and potentially find another person again, like, my gosh, it's just. And you feel, this is your own insecurities caused you to become a toxic partner yeah. because in my opinion, stealing stuff and pretending that they lost it. I mean, that's toxic behavior. That's not something that I would want to be in a relationship with. Um, no. And you, you sab you self sabotaged your own relationship in order to prove a point to the person that you love, and I think that's what you need to repeat to yourself as you pick up the phone and find somebody to be your therapist. Yeah. Uh, so also, as you as you closed this out, 
And Julie says, loving someone who always who will always love someone else takes a strong partner. Absolutely, freaking lutely And if your insecurity is to this point, you're not the partner for them because you can't right. be strong enough to handle the burden of the grief that they're going to carry for the rest of their life. I think you wouldn't, you would have to, you would have to mentally prepare yourself to say like, uh, I am not this person's first choice. Mm-mm. Like I, I'm this person's first choice for this chapter in their life. There you go. But, yes. but I, I'm not their, I'm not their first love. Uh, you're not, you're not going to be a lot of things. Um, that would right. be first choice or first in, in that. And you have to be comfortable with that. It would take a very secure person to be able to uh, to thrive in that kind of relationship. And a very secure person would have to, like not only just for themselves, but to also give the mm-hmm. the widow or widower um, the security to know and, and thrive in that in that as well. It is this right. comment here where, where Brozo <laughs> says, the ring didn't get lost, eaten by the cat or damaged, and I think my point was made. Yeah. I think you're wrong. Uh, I don't think your point was made I at all. <laughs> Uh, I'm giving you Brozo here, and uh, are we in agreement on this? Yeah. All right, we're going for it. We're going to ask uh, on one. I think your your point was to show that you're so insecure that you can't handle this relationship. That point was made. Bravo, yeah. sir. What a Very good. good. Yeah. Very good job. Norman. Well done. Yeah. I see, so many of you that are that that go through yeah. or are going through this kind of thing, and I I feel for you. Um, I know. And thank you, thank you for calling this guy out, even going through what you have gone through, you can see that this is not okay. So thank you for speaking up. Yeah. 